Hello and welcome to Forrester High School Maths Department's National 5 Math Support Materials. My name is Mr. McDonald and I'll be talking you through your topics today. Today our learning intentions are to be able to find the radius, diameter or internal angle of an arc or sector if we know how long that arc is or how much area that sector covers. So here's the type of question that we're going to be looking at today. Uh, in this case, we are asked to find the length of the diameter of this circle sector, and we know that the area of the sector is 115 meters squared. Okay, so first of all, we've got a choice to make in terms of which equation do we use. Are we using the arc length formula or are we using the sector area formula? And because I've been able to highlight the word area in this question, we're using the sector area formula. So I'm going to take that out of here and put that straight into my working. Okay. The second little part of this is to put all the information that we have from the question into my formula, okay? So the sector area I know is 115. So instead of writing SA for sector area, I'm gonna write in 115. The internal angle I know is 135. So I'm gonna change theta for 135. 360 stays on the bottom of the fraction. Pi is still a multiplier of that fraction, and we're multiplying that by radius squared. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to work this equation so that r squared is the subject. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 360. I'm not going to divide by 360, I'm going to multiply by 360 because it's already dividing. What are you talking about, Mr. McDonald? multiply by 360 on both sides. Okay, so what we have is we've got 115 multiply by 360 on the left-hand side of the equation. And on the right hand side of the equation, we've got 135 pi times by r squared. Okay, next step. I want to get rid of the 135 pi. So we're going to divide by that multiplier on this side of the equation to get r squared on its own. But in order to keep this equation balanced, I have to do the same on both sides. Okay, so what we get is that 115 times 360. over 135 pi is r squared. So just to turn this around a little bit, r, the radius is equal to the square root of both sides here. So r is equal to the square root of 115 times by 360 over 135 pi. Again, if you don't have a scientific calculator, it might be better to do this um, step by step. Find out what 115 times 360 is, multiply by 3.14 instead of by pi, um, but you should get to a final answer of r is equal to 9.88 meters. That's rounded to two decimal places. Okay, I'm not finished yet though because my question actually asked me to find the length of the diameter of the circle. So I need to also uh, adjust my variable here. Instead of r, I want to find d for diameter, and that's just going to be double whatever r is. 
So that's 19.76 And there we go. That's my final answer, 19.76 meters. Okay, so here's a second example, very similar to the first one. We're looking for a length of a radius this time. Um, but I'm being given that the length of the arc of the sector is 100 centimeters. That means that outside curved edge um, that would have been part of the circle's circumference is 100 centimeters. Because it has the word length of arc um, in the question, then I'm using my arc length equation. Don't know why that came out there. Oops. So my arc length equation. First step, same as before, I'm going to have to put in all the details that I know. So my arc length is 100. My internal angle is 86. 360 is always the amount of degrees in a circle, so that always stays the same. I'm multiplying that by pi, and then I'm multiplying that by the diameter. Okay. Second step, let's rearrange this so that D is my subject. I'm going to multiply both sides by 360 to get rid of that fraction to start with. Okay, you might want to work out that 100 times 360 is 36,000, but I'm just going to do um, the sum here. So 360 times 100. equals 86 pi times the diameter. Now I want to get rid of the 86 pi so I can get diameter on its own. And we're going to divide by 86 pi. Remember pi is just a number, so um, if we've got 86 times pi, you can divide by 86 pi. So my final answer for diameter is going to be 360 times 100 divided by 86 pi Okay, so my diameter is 133.25 to two decimal places. So if I want to find the radius from there, all I need to do is half that number. So if I divide that by two, I get a radius of 66.6 two and that is in this case centimeters as well because my arc length is being measured in centimeters okay so your method for these questions when you're being asked for a radius or a diameter put the information you know into the original equation uh, whether it's arc length or sector area um, and then rearrange it so that you've got either your diameter or your radius as your subject of your equation Okay, I've got a few more questions here. The other uh, type of detail that you might be asked for um, is the internal angle or the external angle of a sector. Okay, remember internal angle means it's inside the sector. The external angle is just what completes the 360 degree turn outside of the sector. Okay, in this case, we're being told the area of this sector is 152.5 centimeters squared, and we're being asked to find the size of the internal angle. All right, again, we've got the word area in our question, which implies we're using the sector area formula. So I'm going to bring that into our working immediately, just saves me writing it out. Step number two, bring in all the information that we know. So again, I can put in the sector area is 152.5. Oops. 
I don't know my internal angle, so I'm going to leave that as theta. That's what we're going to try and make the subject of this equation. Divide by 360. We're multiplying that by pi times r squared. In this case, that's 8 squared. Okay, so first step, same as all the first steps before, I'm going to multiply both sides by 360 to get rid of that fraction. I'm also, just to make this a little bit easier to deal with, going to figure out what 8 squared is to finish off my equation as well. So I'm going to change that to the answer to 8 squared. So 152.5 times 360 on this side. Equals theta times, and now instead of 8 squared, I'm going to write 64 and pi. Okay, pi times 8 squared is just 64 pi. Now I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 64 pi to get rid of that. Uh, so we can just have our theta, our internal angle, on its own. Okay, so our answer here is going to be 152.5 times 360. all divided by 64 pi. Remember, if you have to use 3.14, by all means use 3.14 and just multiply 64 by 3.14 instead of the pi symbol. That's going to be equal to theta. If we put all that into our calculator, we get that theta, oops, that's not a great theta, is equal to 273. 0, 0.05 degrees. Okay, that's roughly three quarters of the circle, slightly more, which our diagram seems to suggest is right. Okay, roughly three quarters of the circle. It's not exact though, that's why we're doing this whole process. Otherwise, we could have just said 270 degrees. Okay, so that is your final answer for that question there. One more question of this type on angles. Um, this one, uh, we're told the length of an arc is 135 centimeters. We have to find the size of the external angle this time. So instead of what we we're trying to figure out before, which is this internal angle, we're actually trying to find this external angle. So that will have to come into our working eventually. But remember what we have in our equation is still theta and it's still the angle on the inside of the sector. Okay, so for this question, because it's length of an arc, I am pulling out my arc length formula. That's what I'm going to start my working with. I'm going to insert all the information I know just as before. So 135 centimeters uh, goes in for the arc length. That's in the question. We don't know what our internal angle is. It's divided by 360 though, always. We're still multiplying by pi and we're multiplying by the diameter, which is 110 millimeters. Okay, that 55 we've been given is the radius, so we have to double it to get diameter. It's 110 millimeters. Rearranging this, first step is always the same, multiply by 360. That's what I always suggest to do in order to get rid of that fraction and to make it a little bit more linear for your eyes to deal with. Okay, so that gives us 135 times 360 on this side. Again, I don't really suggest that you work this out as you go along. I think as long as you know how to shift the numbers around, um, if you type it into a calculator at the end stage, it's much easier that way than getting bogged down and doing too many calculations along the way. Okay, so um, I'm going to call 110 times pi, 110 pi. That makes it a little bit easier 
for us to figure out the next step, which is I want to get rid of that multiplier. I'm going to divide by 110 pi on both sides. Please bear with my slow clicking mouse. Right, OK. 135 times 360 on the top of the fraction. Divided by 110 pi on the bottom of the fraction. It's a terrible fraction that should be going all the way across there. And that's equal to our internal angle. So our internal angle is equal to 140.64 degrees to two decimal places. However, that's not what we've been asked for. We've been asked for the external angle of this sector. Okay, so we're looking for the red bit on the outside, not the blue bit on the inside. So for our external angle, I'm just gonna write EXT angle. I think um, unless you get given a letter or a symbol to stand for your external angle, EXT angle is enough um, to show the reader exactly what you're trying to do. So to get the external angle, we need to take the full 360, um, that is the circle, and subtract what is on the inside of this sector. With a quick little bit of mental maths, we should get um, it is 219.36 degrees. Okay, and that's our final answer. So much like when you're trying to find a side length, uh, either a radius or a diameter, if you're trying to find an internal or external angle, put all the information into the right equation rearrange it to find what theta is and then if you're trying to find an external angle you want to go that extra step and take your ex your internal angle away from 360 and that will give you your external angle okay well done on getting to this stage of the video remember you can do this ask me questions um either through email show my homework or we have um, today, a live virtual um, team session in the collaboration space where you can ask me questions too. Uh, well done for getting through this video and best of luck on your assignment. Thank you, Nat Fives.